and welcome to Cowgirl Bookworms, a podcast for those of us who read books and wear boots. I'm your host, Brandy Bradley. So what's new this week? In my personal life, uh, my neighbors had some flooding, and now we're having to have a lot of conversations, a lot of adult adult conversations with teams of dudes about flood marks and asbestos and mold and insurance costs and um, not fun it is the it is when they talk about like adult things and adulting this is like next level adulting because it's not just you know paying your bills it's actually having to deal with like situations so other things other things that are going on i I have a new story available on brandybradley.com called Local Monsters. And this story is my crime fiction story with Detective Lindy Darno. It is introducing her to my readers because she is going to be playing a pivotal role in my upcoming novel, Pretty Girls Get Away with Murder. Right now, I'm getting a lot of looks. There's a sample available to download on brandybradley.com slash local monsters. So if you go there, you can get a little taste, see what you think about that, and then you can have the short story. And I just want to make sure I gave a shout out to everyone in Michigan and Ohio and Illinois. Chicago's really showed up for this one. I found that really fascinating. So thank you all of those who have been checking out that short story. I appreciate it. And just looking to share it with others, right? So definitely pass it along. And again, like I said, I do have a murder mystery novel coming out in the fall. On uh, November 1st is the current date that I've listed for that. The Pretty Girls Get Away with Murder is my foray into the murder mystery novel. And it is featuring my detective, uh, Lindy Darno. And right now it is under developmental review, which means that... My developmental editors are reviewing the material and providing feedback to me. And I've mentioned this. I am an indie author. And what that means is I don't have a publishing company or a traditional publishing company who is rallying behind me. I have my own publishing company. I have to rally around me. And I wouldn't be able to do any of that if I didn't have a really awesome team who know me and who are also making sure that I'm hitting it right. Because there's a certain amount of anxiety that goes along with not having a authority figure or a parent telling you that you're doing what you're supposed to do. So I appreciate my team. They look out for me. And it is not an easy process to have a friend who is an experienced writer and editor send you a itemized list of all of your writing flaws. That is not an easy thing to do. But you know, this is how you make the work better. So that's why I'm going through it and I'm paying attention to the things that they are saying that I need to work on. Another thing about all of that is that she is really smart and she is noticing some patterns. These things that I do often that I don't even think about, like little subconscious things. And this is why having outside readers is so important. So yeah, I'm really excited about this book. I'm excited about this novel. I'm excited to continue to write novels. I have 10 slated that I want to get done. And right now I can go ahead and start working on the writing of the next one as well. So a lot of exciting things going on. So what is the story? I like to tell you guys a story. And this week I am going to tell you the story of the flower shop. So the flower shop on a lot of levels was my home. And anyone who grew up in my town and spent any time there can probably understand why. And the reason I started thinking about the flower shop is because Sloan has started a new flower business. She is making flower arrangements for the people in her community. And she lives in a relatively small town. So when you live in a small community, sometimes you don't have a lot of options when it comes to buying flowers for people. Kroger is an option, right? But beyond that, you know, the small community-minded small business flower shops are not always a thing. So she is trying to make that work. And the thing about flower shops, 
is that they are kind of like one of those businesses or careers that you find in romantic comedies, kind of like antique stores or cupcake shops or boutiques. And it sounds like it would be the most fun thing to do. I would also throw bookstores into that, small local bookstores. Running a bookstore is hard, y'all. And so is all of these other businesses because it sounds like, and the way it's portrayed on TV, is that it's this gentle way to be a business owner, that all you have to do is go to your store and make things pretty and hand the pretty things to people. And for flower shops, it's really not that. It's a very different experience. So I grew up in a flower shop because my my grandmother, my ma, my ma, who was very important to me, my ma, years and years and years ago, took a flower arranging class and fell in love with it. And my grandfather wanting to make her happy, built a fully electrical building in the backyard so she could work on her arrangements. Uh, I was around five or so when they built this. I might have been younger, but I do remember the um, the day that it was built because all the men in the family came together as if it were some type of barn raising. I remember it was cold because I was wearing a sweater and one of my great uncles gave me a nail and showed me how to use a hammer. And it wasn't long before it was a fully functioning business. My mother quit her factory job to work with my grandmother, and that small business grew to support multiple households. And as kids, we flocked there because it was a busy space. There were always flowers to be arranged, deliveries to be made, prep work that needed to be completed. I worked there almost every afternoon from the age of nine, marking my hours on the shared calendar and getting about two bucks an hour. And when I became a teen who could drive, they bumped it up to five bucks. And if you worked a full day, someone usually ordered lunch for everyone. In the summer, we watched soap operas together when we wrapped these thin wires with white floral tape for corsages. Mondays were when supplies were dropped off. So we unpacked boxes and unwrapped plants. And some Mondays, we'd drive to Memphis and pick up supplies that we couldn't get close to home. And also stocking up on food things so we can, that we could get cheaper in the city. Because we grew up out in the country. So we'd stop by the store called Ike's and just pick up cases of Coca-Cola and caffeine-free Diet Coke for my mom. And you know that memory that you might have of a kid on a lazy Saturday or Sunday? Maybe you have these memories where you would wake up and you would make yourself a bowl of cereal and watch TV and possibly play a game or two, maybe go to the mall, maybe even get a little bored. Those moments were few and far between for me and my siblings when we worked. And probably the worst of those or the biggest work day of the year was Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day for a flower shop is like Super Bowl for a wings place or like a limo company at prom or a brunch spot on Mother's Day. And a fr- years ago, a friend of mine DM'd me on Valentine's Day and said, don't you miss it talking about the flower shop? And I said, no, I really don't. Because my friend was one of my grandmother's employees who would arrange flowers for the big day. And I think the reason that she loved it is because she got to be in the middle of the action because she could actually arrange flowers. This was not a skill set that I had. So she would be around all the women working, slinging flowers, barking orders, yelling things like, who took my damn scissors? And I was in the car all day. I was the only person in the family who was the least uncomfortable being around new people. And so my mother always paired me with some associate from Bamboosters or an old brownie troop leader who volunteered to help for the day. And when you deliver, you think it would be like fun, right? Because you're in your car and you got your music. Except I was in there with a stranger. But usually, like, you know, you think you could like have the music on and like rock out. But deliveries, especially on Valentine's Day, are relentless. It creates this out and back rhythm. And every time you compete, complete a delivery and return home, you think you're going to have a little break or you feel like that task is done. I'm done for the day. But that's not really how it works. Because before you could even get all the way back, they had everything ready for you to like be loaded back up and sent right back out to do the absolute same thing. And if I was lucky, I would be in the truck for like these large Valentine's Day drops, right? So like nursing homes and schools and hospitals, large office complexes. But no, somehow I always ended up in the car that had to make the multiple stops like all day long. So I was going to people's homes. So anyone who's 
been a DoorDash delivery person or pizza delivery person, or maybe you like have a side hustle with Postmates, you can probably understand the anxiety of knocking on a stranger's door. Because even if it's for a delivery, there are a lot of variables associated with it. You don't always know which door to knock on. People don't think about their dogs, so you have to think about whether that dog bites. And then also the inevitable, what if this is at the wrong house? But the best part, the best part of Valentine's Day was at the end of the day, when Valentine's Day was over. Um, I would come back from all of my deliveries, and my Aunt Mary would have usually dropped by with stuff for sandwiches, chips, cold fried chicken, and I'd pick over what was left and sit on the floor at the shop, and I'd eat, watching my pop sweep away all the greenery that I dropped to the floor, and my mother at the desk entering all the credit cards we took over the phone that day. And it was hard, but it was also home. There were always people in the flower shop. Uh, There were always Cokes in the walk-in cooler and Hershey's Kisses in a bucket somewhere. The TV was always on. It was either soaps or some kid's movie for the baby cousins. And if I was looking for someone, I would always start there first. That also made it the place where decisions were made, where arguments broke out, where people said they were sorry, or the closest anyone in my family ever came to admitting they were wrong. We had parties there, but we also mourned there. But I don't miss it. I have never thought, wow, maybe this business could someday be mine. And some things are somewhat, I guess you could say, triggering. The smell of green glow and hot glue. Those ASMR videos where they slice through foam always reminds me of the aqua foam and the sound of a serrated knife against styrofoam. And I despise Spanish moss because it was used to cover the dirt and the potted plants we delivered. Bear showed me a peace lily and suggested we buy one for the studio. And I practically threw his little iPhone across the room because those were the plants that everyone ordered for almost every occasion. Don't want. Even a lovely arrangement from Kroger makes me think of funeral arrangements. Sloan sent me a photo of an arrangement she had made strapped to the front seat of her SUV, and I was immediately transported back to driving down back roads, steering with one hand and holding a vase of flowers in the other, because that's what we were taught to do to make sure it didn't tip over and spill flower water everywhere. And I know she wants me to be happy and supportive, but all I can think about is how hard that life is, or at least the way we did it was hard. We were always available. Weekends were derailed because of funerals. It was messy. It was exhausting. I could not find the joy in the process because it wasn't my process. It was my mom's process. She was the one who loved it. We were just along for the ride. So that's what I tell Sloan. I said that if she was going to take on all the crazy, she needed to love it because none of it was easy. So she tells me a story. Someone called her and said they wanted a just-because arrangement for their daughter. Something pretty and springy. So Sloan made it and delivered it to the young woman at her workplace. And the young woman was so touched and so thrilled that she cried. And it made Sloan feel good, like she was part of making someone stay. And that was worth all the crazy for her that day. And I guess if that's enough for her, I guess that's enough for me, too. I mean, it's her crazy that she's taking on, not mine. So I try to be supportive and um, give her as much info and tips and tricks that I can remember, you know, to help her in her process. First thing I told her is that she needed to get one of those pads for shock resistance, like they have in kitchens where people do a lot of standing, because I know my grandmother had back problems toward the end. And I also encouraged her to buy some chef's clogs, um, like some Donesco or something that she could wear while she worked. So it would take that pressure off of her back because she had also, Sloan had also been complaining about back problems. And um, with the most serious voice I've heard in a while, she told me, she said, I will never wear clogs. And so I guess that she would just rather live in the pain. So that's fine. That's her choice. That has nothing to do with me. All right. So if you have enjoyed this, this story and other stories, the light, the breezy, the um, uh, the country and the bougie, please like and subscribe. Please leave a review. Let me know what you were thinking and let me know what kind of content that you're looking for. So thank you for listening. Also, remember, I have new content every week, every Tuesday 
on brandybradley.com. So definitely make sure that you are checking in on those. I run all of my stuff through Wix and Wix actually has a service that you can sign up for where you get an email alert every time there is a new post. So that is something that is available for you to become a member. Also, don't forget each month I deliver new exclusive content, different content. I'm content machine, y'all. Every month in the Books and Boots newsletter that and that is available, sign up at brandybradley.com slash newsletter. And do not forget, read books, wear boots. XOXO.